Good evening. Welcome to evening prayer. Today is the commemoration of St. Peter Chrysogelus, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. <clears throat> if you're praying along with us tonight, we are on page 672 in our prayer books. <clears throat> o God, come to our assistance. O Lord, make haste to help us. Be present with us, Lord, for it is evening. The day which you have given us is nearly complete. Be our light and scatter the darkness from our midst. Hear us as we lift to you our evening prayer and praise. <clears throat> the day is now past and the evening is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Lord of all, our breath and being come from you, yet our earthly end is dust. As you loose the bound and free, feed the hungry with the truth of your word, so bring us in your mercy through the grave and gate of death to the feast of eternal life where you live and reign forevermore. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion bow. Your spirit sin with grace divine and let your truth within us shine. Unseal our lips to sing your praise, our souls to you in worship raise. Make strong our faith, increase our light, that we may know your name aright. Until we join the hosts that cry, holy are you, O Lord most high, and in the light of that blessed place, forever behold you face to face. Glory to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, to you, O blessed Trinity, be praised throughout eternity. Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in power people, powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the letter of James, the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds, it shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Today is the commemoration of St. Peter Chrysogelus who was born around the year 380. He was elected as Bishop of Ravenna in 424 and instructed the flock there through his sermons and his writings. He died around the year 450. This evening we have a reflection from a sermon by St. Peter Chrysogelus. A virgin conceived, bore a son, and yet remained a virgin. This is no common occurrence, but a sign. A reason, no reason here, but God's power, 
for he is the cause and not nature. It is a special event, not shared by others. It is divine, not human. Christ's birth was not necessity, but an expression of omnipotence, a sacrament of piety for the redemption of the human race. He who made us without generation from pure clay made us again and was born from a pure body. The hand that assumed clay to make our flesh deigned to assume a body for our salvation. That the creator is in his creature and God is in the flesh brings dignity to humanity without dishonor to the one who made our race. Why then, people, are you so worthless in your own eyes and yet so precious to God? Why render yourself such dishonor when you were created by him? Why do you ask how you were created and do not seek to know why you were made? Was not this entire visible universe made for your dwelling? It was for you that the light dispelled the overshadowing gloom. For your sake was the night regulated and the day measured. And for you were the heavens embellished with the varying brilliance of the sun, the moon, and the stars. The earth was adorned with flowers, groves, and fruit, and the constant marvelous variety of lovely living things was created in the air, the fields, and the seas for you, lest sad solitude destroy the joy of God's new creation. And the Creator still works to devise things that can add to your glory. He has made you in His image, that you might in your person make the invisible creator present on earth. He has made you his legate so that the vast empire of the world might have the Lord's representative. Then in his mercy, God assumed what he made in you. He wanted now to be truly manifest in human flesh, just as he had wished to be revealed in us as in as an image. Now he would be in reality what he had submitted to be in symbol. And so Christ is born that by his birth he might restore our nature. He became a child, was fed, and grew, that he might inaugurate the one perfect age to remain forever as he had created it. He supports us that we might no longer fall. And the creature he had formed of the earth, he now makes heavenly. And what he had endowed with a human soul, he now vivifies to become a heavenly spirit. In this way, he fully raised our race to God and left in us neither sin, nor death, nor travail, nor pain, nor anything earthly with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, for all the ages of eternity. Amen. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Such was his will, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood, we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time to bring all things into one in him in the heavens and on the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> in the evening, we call to you, O Lord. 
be merciful and hear our prayer. Throughout the ages, you have brightened your church through the distinguished leaders and holy men and women. Let us always rejoice in the splendor of the truth they taught. You forgave the sins of your people when holy leaders like Moses sought your compassion. Through their intercession, continued to purify and sanctify your holy people. In the midst of their brothers and sisters, you anointed your holy ones and filled them with the Holy Spirit. Fill all those who preach and teach among your people with the same spirit. You yourself are the hope and strength of our holy teachers and pastors. Let none of them, one of the price of your blood, remain far from you. The shepherds of your church keep your flock from being snatched out of your hand. Through them you give your flock eternal life. Save those who have died, those for whom you gave up your life. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from the evil one. Lord God, you filled your servant Peter Chrysogelus with heavenly wisdom. Fill us with your spirit that we may remain true to his teaching and put into practice, put it into practice in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for it is you who will redeem me, O Lord, my God. Now, O Lord, dismiss your servants in peace, for your word has been fulfilled. Our eyes have seen the salvation you have displayed in the sight of all the peoples, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. May the glory of the Lord rest upon us, and in his peace may we be blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's help remain with us always, and with our loved ones both near and far away. May God grant to us a quiet night and a peaceful death. May souls of the faithful departed, through the mercies of God, rest in peace. Amen. <laughs>